hello hello and welcome to this collaboration video i don't know whether to laugh or cry um i'm going to tell you about this collaboration it's been organized by the amazing joey defeat you all know joey um and there are several of us involved i'm going to go through those in a moment the brief for this was fast flow stitching for journals or journal related products. Now, it was, it was a while ago that I received the message from Joey and I was really up for it. However, my project is pants. I'm letting you know in advance. I will certainly be showing you what not to do. I kept mine simple. However, it was not simple. It wasn't simple at all. I really tried to push myself out of my comfort zone to do something for this collaboration. I would certainly recommend you watch the other videos. We have Joey, myself, the fantastic Gaila Gastinelli, 49 Dragonflies, Shabby Dabby Doodah, Roxy Creations, Artie Mays, and Louis Heinzel. I hope I've said that name correctly. Now, as you as you'll know, some of those amazing crafters are so proficient with their sewing machines. They they're going to blow you away. I cannot wait to watch it. Um, now, I was excited and extremely intimidated when I saw the list of names that were involved in this collaboration. So I hope you enjoy this series of videos. And if you do something, please do um, share it so we can see what you've done. Um, and just, just, you know, you, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what everyone else has come up with. So... Um, I'm going to list everyone down below. You'll be able to pop along to their channel. Um, we're all going to be using fast flow stitching in the title, so you should be able to find the videos. Um, we're all going to be putting them up from now onwards for the next few days, so um, they will be popping up. When I had an attempt, probably a year and a half ago now, um, at least, uh, and I probably spent maybe five days having, an, having a go at this, and I'll show you one of my attempts. Here we go. <laughs> that's, what, that's one of my first attempts. Uh, I purchased this foot, which is a universal foot. I got it from Amazon and it was under five pounds. I've got these little, like I said, I've cut these little squares out. Um, I'm now going to have an attempt at sewing some circles. And I know you can sew circles with your normal um, sewing machine foot it's just a little bit more difficult I haven't sewn any circles with this I've only attempted um, some flowers so I'm gonna I'm gonna um, put my needle down and I'm just gonna do a few little stitches again okay um, that's not too bad Beep. that was a bad word in my head okay let me take that out. Um, I'm, I want to do circles and um, I'm going to have to practice. So I'm just going to practice. I'm going to use a bigger piece of fabric because I think the fact this is so small doesn't give me a lot of fabric to move around. This is canvas, so this is slightly thicker. Okay, let's just have a go. Um, I, th I think I'm improving, maybe. I think I'm getting better. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop filming for a bit. Welcome to day two of filming. You won't have seen day one yet <laughs> because I'm going to put day one at the end of this video. I kind of decided I'm going to work on this project after making my mistakes and show you this project but if you are interested in the previous two they are going to be at the end just clips of that video to show you the kind of journey that I took after the practice sewing simple circles I decided the color scheme didn't work for me the method didn't work for me so I'm starting project number three and I'm going to share project number three with you what I've done is I have dyed pre-dyed some elements that I want to use 
because this is a better colour scheme for me. I will show you the previous ones, like I said, but what you need is, a, this is the journal that this is going to go on top of. So I made sure my piece of canvas or heavier weight fabric will fit on top of that. I have a piece of cheesecloth, slightly larger. I have a piece of cotton. It's going to go this way. Um, that I have dyed. It's all been dyed with Distress Ink. And this piece is going to go here. So I've made sure I've got plenty of room there. There's lots of space around this one. In the previous projects I was working a lot with blues but I've decided to pull out some of these fabrics that I got from her name is Cheryl Olive and I can't for the life I think it's Olive Original her name her shop name this is going to be on top of here like this I haven't cut this very well so I'm going to trim, I'm going to trim this quickly and I'm going to use this to keep coming backwards and coming back to it. What I need to do is I need to fill this so I'm going to add some glue and just start adding some strips of fabric. Um, not everything is going to show, it's kind of um, a little bit of a hit and miss really what shows and what doesn't. But I'm just going to add my fabric. I'm a little bit disheartened by this project, to be honest. It, it, I had something in my head and it's not really working out. Um, I'm going to turn that over. That's got a little bit of glue on there now. It's not really working out as I planned. Right, let's see, try number one, how are we doing, right, is that, um, I think they're all pretty interesting, they all have a little pop of colour, I'm, I'm happy with that, I'm happy with that, that's great, after all of that, so what I'm going to do is flip this over really carefully, and trim the edges of this. So in my previous projects, I actually layered I layered the cheesecloth on top of this. But this time I'm going to lay this first and then my cheesecloth. And I absolutely hope this works out because, like I said, we're, this is attempt number three and I'm trying to improve each time. Pretty sure it's going to be the better method. So this is how it's going to be sewn. I'm just going to flip it over one more time. I'm, I'm going to put a bead of glue along here. have a few things to set up on the sewing machine so this can be drying while I do that put this down I'm gonna actually I want to ensure this is really well glued because it's gonna go through the underside of the sewing machine so let me move this aside sort my sewing machine out and then we will sew so I'm going to start by creating a double wavy line all the way around the edge. I need to leave a reasonable gap 
and I have left myself plenty of space around my circles to do that. I'm just going to pull this out very slightly. Okay, I think I'm in a reasonable. I think I'm in a reasonable position now to sew. My foot's up. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this down and put the needle in. Now I need to pay attention to the edge of my fabric. I am going to do a wavy line all the way around the edge. Now I'm going to speed up the video and remove the sound. Um, but remember, it's fast foot, slow hands. That's not particularly great. And what I do is just do a little wiggle stitch to start off. Okay. So here I go. So I'm going to tell you now, this is absolutely pants. It's not going to work um, as I hoped. For example, I've got my wavy line here and it's so close to that circle. As I do the circle, it's just not going to be um, great. The same with the circle over here um, and even here. OK, so um, we're just going to have to carry on now and see what happens. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things. I'm now going to do the circles. Uh, this one was terrible. This one was even worse than the other two. I'm going to cut it. So what I need to do is cut through the cheesecloth and then cut through this first layer of fabric. You need a fairly sharp pair of scissors to do this um, and you don't want to go through the fabrics underneath. Now I seem to have lost my really good embroidery scissors so I'm just going to cut all the way along and you need to go between your stitching which in some cases for me is going to be a little bit difficult now but let's go so I've sewn I've, I've cut this and what we need to do now is scratch and open up this gap um, kind of make the edges of the fabric tatty now although I think this is probably the worst one I have done um, I've got a feeling it's actually gonna look <laughs> better than the other two uh, fingers crossed it's just you have you can't give up just keep going keep going um, and eventually you'll get something you're happy with um, really hoping I'm really hoping that's going to be the case okay I actually don't I actually don't mind that now I've started to cut it and now I'm going to do the same with the circles the circles are going to be a lot easier because I cut the actual fabric prior to me starting this so it's just going to be a case of um you know pulling out some of that cheesecloth these should be a lot easier so um through this what have i learned um that it's really difficult using these um doing the slow fast stitching so what have i learned um i've learned that some things you're just not going to be good at 
uh, some things you do have to practice and persevere with to get something that you are happy with and it can take a lot of attempts to get there but that's okay that's okay Was it a mistake putting the cheesecloth on the top? I don't know is the answer to that. Would it have looked better if the cheesecloth was underneath? Maybe. Um, I'm actually okay with this. I like it. I do, I do like it after all of that. Um, I'm going to trim away a little bit of this fabric here because there's a little bit of green underneath there that I quite like. So I'm just going to very carefully cut out a small amount. And then I'm just going to scratch that a little bit. To... There we go. Right, even though... I actually thought this was the biggest disaster. I think it is my favourite so far. So I'm going to show you it on the book cover. That would be where it would go. Um, I am actually quite happy with it. <laughs> I do actually quite like it. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to show you. This was my first one. This was my first one. And I did this slightly differently. I will show you, obviously, in the in the next part of the video. Um, but this one, I made the mistake of it was a it was a cream fabric, and I dyed it with it, with inks after I had um, finished. So that didn't really work. The second attempt, I dyed the fabrics beforehand, which I learned was definitely the right thing to do. So this one, I'm actually quite happy with now now looking at it i'm quite happy with that and i don't mind this one so much now i'm not looking at it quite so much so this is the final piece and i actually quite like it even though i thought it was a disaster you can work on these edges as long as you like to get enough of your fabric showing through um, and like I said you wanted to leave the stitches a good a decent amount of space between each row so you can have plenty of that fabric showing I did not do that these wavy lines really I found tricky I found tricky but if you want to have fun if you want to try something new then go for it go for these one of these feet you know they are they are oh <laughs> you should see my desk you know for five pounds you can have a lot of fun um that's all i'm saying um it, it's made me giggle it's i have really had a laugh um doing this and you can see i didn't actually get to add that this time i think i might glue that on i think that will be fine and i think i may even put a hand stitch or two in there um, but that's that's still going to go on maybe not even on that circle now um we'll see uh so thank you joey for organizing this collaboration it's been interesting and a lot of fun uh i cannot wait to see the videos from everybody else it's you know i really can't I have prepped my bits and pieces that I'm going to try and use for this project. So I have a piece of canvas, um, any kind of thick fabric would work, a piece of thin cotton, this was actually the lining of a dress at some point, um, I've got some cheesecloth, a bit of lace that I'm not 100% sure I'm going to use, and some strips of coloured fabric. I've also got a little doily that I, I might use. And lay this on top. 
match my corners up a little bit. And I'm going to cut this to size here and here. And lay on my cheesecloth. I'm going to tell you my plan. Um, so you saw, um, I have a whole heap of fabric under here now. Well, here it is. Um, I'm going to do, I, I've decided against this because that was absolutely terrible. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, I'm going to do, um, kind of change it slightly to my original plan. I'm going to do a wavy line all the way around the edge. And then I'm going to add this and do a circle. And then I'm going to add some more random circles. Okay, so I'm going to turn the sound off to do this. And um, sew, but obviously you will see me sewing. Um, you could make the full journal cover like this, a little bit out of my skill zone. <laughs> so I'm doing mine as a topper. So this will attach to a cover. Under here, I wanna make sure I don't go over my background fabric. I make I need to make sure that's in um, in the stitch. Okay, so I'm hoping you're going to be able to see, um, and I'm just going to go for it. Um, because I have done some a little bit more practice, but I haven't got any better at it. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but I did do a little bit more practice after um, I, I <laughs> after I filmed my practice. So here we go. This is what we have. Um, it's kind of got the tatty look I was going for, definitely. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more tatty than, um, but it's going to get even tattier. So we're, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good with that. Right. So now what you need to do um, is you need a pair of sharp scissors. Okay. But you have to be super careful. What I was careful of is that I left um, a gap around my border and I didn't bring, I didn't overlap this center of um, the circles. Okay. Now the outside I think is probably going to be the most difficult. So I'm going to start with that. And I've got two distress stains. This, I mean, this could go completely horribly wrong now, um, but I'm going to... Okay. Um, I think I would have dyed the fabrics first. Might do that. Might do another one. Might do another one. Um, what I've done this time is I've pre-dyed my fabrics. Uh, this is the book cover. Um, that I'm probably going to use this on. So I'm making sure it all fits. Get rid of that. I have dyed my piece of lace and a piece of cheesecloth. Don't need those for a minute. And then I have dyed this piece of fabric. And all I have used is Distress Stains and One Oxide. Okay, so that's that. I've got a doily 
and this is the main thing my strips of fabric so I need that out of the way my base piece is a heavier weight canvas and I'm using this because it needs to take the the weight of everything um, that I'm going to add to it but it also need I need to make sure I don't go through this later on which will become apparent I'm going to use a little bit of art glitter glue now you you don't have to do this you can use pins um, I prefer not to use pins um, just because I'm not a sewer and I'm not really good at placement and things like that and sewing through them so I've got some different color blues and green fabrics Okay, so that is layer one. It, it, this is the kind of look I'm going for. I think if you are not good at something, then, um, you know, going for the scruffy look is a good option. Um, and most of what I do has that scruffy look. So it's kind of my thing anyway. Okay. That's done for the gluing. And I just want a little bit of poking out the bottom there. Okay, so we've got quite a, a wad of fabrics here now. And at some point, I'm also going to add this, which is going to bulk that up even more. I'm ready to start sewing. Again, because of my practice one, I have changed the colour of the thread to a blue. I am done <laughs> with the sewing. Woohoo! Done with the sewing. I think that's done. I'm happy with how this turned out. Um, and obviously, it's going to go on top of this book. So it will be a book cover. Um, I, <laughs> I really do hope you've got something out of that. This is my test one. I just want to talk through um, very quickly at the end here um, what worked and what didn't. I thought this was going to be terrible. I'm actually quite pleased with how this one turned out. And even looking back at my first one that I thought was a complete disaster, I actually don't mind that either. Um, so this was the order they were created in. Um, these ones were just strips of fabric which worked really well until this one was great this one um using the strips just strips of fabric i ended up with three green circles which i wasn't too happy with this one i much preferred this method um, make sure your stitches are far enough apart to get a good amount of that fabric showing and do spend time um, roughing up your edges because it does make all of the difference um, I need to do a little bit more on all of these probably you're going to have a lot of fun a lot of laughs um, a few tears probably and a bit of screaming and a little bit of beep um, because I had plenty of all of that thanks again to Joey for organizing this um. yeah so thanks again to Joey and all the other collaborators. I cannot wait to see what everyone has come up with um, because I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot from their videos too. 
take care and I will see you soon. Bye.